Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. Today I will be doing my reaction as well as ratings to the booktube prize semi-finals fiction group A. I was doing a vlog and I did it through the first book I read but I found as I was reading the books especially because many of them as you'll see are very short in this fiction group that I just didn't have a whole lot to say while I was reading them and so it just wasn't going to be a very interesting vlog. So instead I just decided to kind of scrap the vlog footage and just do a sit down like final thoughts and rankings video here at the end of the round. So I'm going to go through the six books in order from six to one. This was somewhat of an interesting group for me. I personally felt pretty strong negative feelings about uh, my five and six but one through four I would not be surprised if any of those four make it through to the final round as I did all enjoy all four of them and did have a bit of trouble ranking them one through four. However I also think I might be in the minority with five and six so I'll be very intrigued to see how this fiction group ends up progressing into the final round of the booktube prize. But without further ado I'm just going to get into my thoughts about each book. So in sixth place I put A Woman Is No Man by Etoff Room and this one I actually read last year in about March of 2019 and I was not really a fan of it when I read it and I didn't really want to read it again but I do know that this one is quite loved by a lot of people here on booktube so I will be intrigued to see if it actually ends up making it to the final round. My feelings are somewhat complicated about it especially because I really don't want to minimize Etoff Room's experience as a Palestinian American woman but I just really didn't like how these characters were portrayed. I found that they were all quite repetitive in terms of being similar to one another and not having a lot of kind of unique character traits and they also just felt really one-dimensional to me. They didn't really have a lot of nuance in terms of what their actions were and the kind of things that they said and believed. But more importantly and also like more controversially I found that this book played into a lot of like really negative stereotypes that white Americans and like white Westerners more broadly have about Palestinian slash Palestinian American people and then more broadly like Arab slash Arab American people and then Muslims kind of even more broadly than that in terms of the very strict reinforcement of gender roles i.e. that men are really controlling and violent and often abusive towards women and women's bodies and women's thoughts and that women all feel somewhat trapped in their gender role and that they want to escape and they want to be independent and free like that's just such a stereotypical understanding of like Muslim family and relationship dynamics by white Americans that to see it portrayed in all three of the couples that are featured in this book was just like so frustrating to me because I wanted a book that was more nuanced and like kind of showed joy and happiness within that type of relationship. And I obviously don't want to negate Room's experience as a Palestinian American woman like if this is um, something she sees as a pervasive problem in uh, like her family or her culture like I totally understand that that may be the kind of narrative that she is coming from and I definitely don't want to like minimize her experience if that is something that she has experienced in her life. It just to me really felt like it was kind of reinforcing a lot of these really negative stereotypes that we have about gender dynamics and marriage and kind of the ways in which marriages play out within Muslim culture that I just didn't really love. So yeah that one I gave 2.75 stars was not really a fan would not really recommend it but again like there are a lot of people that really like it. I just personally to me couldn't look past how much this reinforced these like negative stereotypes that we have about Muslim people and their gender dynamics. So that was that one. Then moving on to book number five we have 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Alif Shafak and this one was fine. It was not super memorable to me. It was the first book I read for this round and I honestly don't really remember that much about it now like a month and a half after reading it. But I do think the premise was interesting and I liked the ways in which it kind of explored death and spirituality and family and the kind of variability of family but I don't know it just like wasn't a very memorable story. I never really felt that connected to Layla as a main character and while we did get these like very tragic pieces of her life they didn't really necessarily paint a full life or a full person in my mind. Additionally the second half or like last third of the novel follows six of Layla's friends who we meet early on in a memory that Layla has about this friend and then they are kind of identified as one of her six closest friends but since that little memory of them was so short and that was really the only introduction we got to them as people I honestly had a hard time differentiating them in that last section in terms of who was who and who was associated with what memory and like what am I supposed to know about them because they weren't really developed at all in the second narrative it almost took on this like 
kind of comedy of errors type situation where they're like traveling around Istanbul trying to find Layla's body that I just like I didn't really understand what was happening between the two stories and like what I was supposed to feel or how I was supposed to be connected to the characters in the second half slash last third. So yeah I thought all in all it was an interesting story and I think Elise Chalk does have an interesting writing style but it was not one that was really gonna like stick with me nor did I think it really compared to a lot of the kind of mastery that I personally saw in some of the higher ranked books. So I gave this one three stars. It was fine but compared to the other books it just really did not um, compare for me. Then at number four, and this one was kind of hard because I did genuinely enjoy this book, but compared to the top three, it just was not as good in my opinion. So number four ended up being Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, which I gave 3.5 stars. And this one I think just didn't capture me, as I said, as much as I think it has other people. I do think Woodson's writing is phenomenal. It's really beautiful, really poignant, and she does manage to create this really emotionally driven story in like less than 200 pages. The narrative itself is like fairly sparse as you can see it's kind of just like little sentences here and there that I think are really poignant and important but the main thing that I felt while reading this book is that I just wanted more. Like I wanted more of the characters, I wanted more of their story, I wanted kind of more of a sense of their connections and the changes through time that they experienced in those connections. Um, it just felt like it was too short which makes sense I mean it's less than 200 pages but yeah I just like didn't fully feel like I um, understood the characters and while they were very like unique and I think well drawn for how short the book is I just wanted it to be longer. Additionally I also found the ending to be a little confusing. One aspect in particular I found especially confusing which is a major spoiler so I'll just like write spoilers here and then once it's gone you will know that I'm done talking about the spoilers but one of the characters in this actually dies in 9-11 and it's like done in such a beautiful way because one this family lives in New York and so the daughter of the man who dies in 9-11 is at school in homeroom and she and her fellow classmates are like watching this happen on the TV and realizing that all of them know someone who's like in this building right now that's going to die. Um, which was really poignant but then after that in the next couple chapters they all went back in time and then there were some chapters that were like after 9-11 and I honestly just got confused as to like when things were happening. like. Did I miss a chapter of those after 9-11? I really didn't know. I was very confused. Like obviously I knew he died in 9-11 but then it just like wasn't super clear like post 9-11 or if the story even like happened post 9-11. Like if there were chapters I just genuinely like I didn't know. So that was one thing also that I was just like you know this is just like too kind of sparse for me to fully understand I think everything that was going on. Which does make me think that maybe this would fare better on like a reread because I do think there's a lot in here that I probably didn't even get like get the first time I read it but uh, as like kind of a first initial read and in comparison to the other books it was a little too confusing and a little too sparse for me to fully appreciate the novel. So yeah this was number four but I did give it 3.5 stars and would still really recommend it. Then number three which I was actually quite surprised by I didn't think this book would advance for me to the finals but this one really did stand out in my mind and that is Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I read this for the quarterfinals so I read it back in April of this year. I really enjoyed it. It was my number two for the quarterfinals ranking but I didn't think that it would stand up as well against all of these books but I was wrong. I really really remember this one fondly and think it what it's doing is done in a really effective way. Um, so as Miriam Taves says in the preface of this book it's almost more a kind of exploration of like feminist theology and like a feminist reaction to this event that happens than it is an actual novel. Like really nothing happens in this novel in terms of a plot of any kind. It's just these women talking about what course of action they should take after they've learned of a tragic event. But I found the discussions that Taves brings up in this book such as like religious autonomy, particularly in religious extremist groups, gender-based dynamics, and like questions of the views of God and what God is hoping for you I think are really pertinent and like really well explored and well done in this book. That I kept thinking about it while I was reading the other books and so it had to be in this kind of top three. My one critique, and this was a critique that I had back when I was reading it back in April, is that the discussion surrounding these topics, which are very complex, is so nuanced and put together that sometimes it almost felt a little too like 
niche and like put into boxes especially given the circumstances that these women are illiterate women that are like dealing with the immediate aftermath of this like really unspeakable tragedy that's happening in their lives and so it almost felt like the eloquence and thought that was happening in this book didn't quite feel realistic and so that often would take me out of the story a little bit because while the deeper conversations are framed in this very like understandable conversation of like do we what course of action do we take the depth that the conversation went to just sometimes felt a little unbelievable to me given the circumstances of the novel but either way I thought it was really well done and really thought-provoking and uh would highly recommend this so this was my number three pick and I did rate this one four stars then in my number two spot we have On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong this is the one that I finished most recently and one that I just thought was absolutely incredible so this is one of the most beautiful novels I've ever read Wong has such a way with words he's a poet by trade this is his first like prose novel but it reads very poetically and I think you can see that background really shine through in this novel so this is a very autobiographical novel that follows a young boy named Little Dog whose family moves escapes Vietnam as refugees spends a short period of time in the Philippines at a refugee camp and then moves to Hartford Connecticut to start a new life in a working class neighborhood so Little Dog's mom single mother is a manicurist in Hartford and Little Dog is just basically narrating his life back to his mother who is illiterate about his experiences uh, as a child and the kind of trauma that his mom passed on to him as well as some of the abuse he experienced from his mom because of her trauma um, and then also an exploration of his sexuality and his discovering of that sexuality with a young boy named Trevor. This is not necessarily the most like plot forward novel but it does have some major like events that do happen over the course of the book but it's still I think the way that Wong has captured like every day and the feelings and emotions that he was feeling during particular moments in his life are just so poignant um, and he also intersperses that with these very kind of almost encyclopedia like entries about the Vietnam War or Tiger Woods who is also half Vietnamese as well as the opioid epidemic which becomes more relevant in the second half of the novel so I really enjoyed kind of that interspersing of these more kind of very like fact-based little pieces right alongside these very emotionally raw moments I think was really well done which I think can sometimes be jarring to some people but I really enjoyed it personally um and so yeah I think this novel is so powerful and so beautifully done that I had no choice but to put it in the number two spot so this one I gave 4.25 stars would really recommend this one as well really really enjoyed it and then last but definitely not least we have Lainey by Max Porter. This one I absolutely loved. I was not expecting to love it as much as I did, but I think what Max Porter has done here is just so poignant and brilliant. And I think also if I was a parent, as this is very much a like discussion and exploration of like being a parent and the fears of being a parent, I think this book would be even more kind of profound and effective as a short novel. So this is a novel where we follow Lanny who is a young boy living in a rural town in uh, England about an hour from London and Lanny's characterization and the kind of childlike fascination that he has with the world I think is so true to form in terms of young children. I think the discussions of like the rural urban divide are also really fascinating and really well done in this as well as the kind of allegorical aspects regarding the environment and our treatment of the environment and our connection to the land. I also really enjoyed especially given that those kind of more allegorical aspects are told through dead Papa Toothwort who's this like mythical creature and I also I really liked the kind of um very experimental way that Papa Toothwort writes. I think that worked really well for me and I listened to the audiobook of this one alongside reading it and I think that really helped create this narrative in terms of um, this all like seeing presence of Dead Papa Toothwort. I will say since Dead Papa Toothwort was one of my favorite parts of the novel and he is most prominently featured in the first part that was probably my favorite but the second parts I think also uh, had a bit more of the kind of thematic explorations of like the rural urban divide and like the fears of parenting so I also enjoyed those sec sections quite a lot as well. Um, also like Ocean Wong, Max Porter is a poet by trade. His first full-length work was called Grief. Grief is a thing with feathers and it was also a novel told in verse kind of I think. I'm not super familiar with Grief is a thing with feathers and while this one is in prose 
Um, it definitely has a lot of really poetic aspects. So yeah, 4.25 stars for this one as well. Definitely a favorite for sure as I ranked it number one. So there is that one and that brings us to the end of my ranking. So it's interesting to me that my like top three were the most experimental of the group um, as I'm not usually a big fan of experimental literature but these three I think did you know ex the experimental form really worked very well for the stories they were trying to tell. And as I said previously I do think that a lot of these novels have a lot of um, strong points. Um, they also all have some weak points so I will be very intrigued to see which three actually end up making it to the final round of the book two prize and I think that is everything. If you found my channel through the book two prize my name is Jenny I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe if you're interested. Additionally if you participated in this round particularly in this group I'd love to hear how you ranked the books and if you had any similar or different thoughts to me about any of these books and I think that's everything. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you next time.